Hi and welcome to Indores TV. Today we're going to talk about Harvia with analyst Rauli Juva. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Harvia is the world's largest sauna and spa company. And uh, in a nutshell, what do they do? Yeah, yeah. More on the sauna side, less on the spa side. I would say, I would say yeah. <laughs> if you think think how they do, but they are, they are they are, you know, traditionally been in the sauna heaters. That that, that was originally their their main or is still their main business, but it's it's the where the company started. So so wood and electric heaters for the sauna and components for it, and and then now in the recent years they have been also expanding on delivering the actual sauna rooms and, and kind of the, all the all the wood wood parts as well and and, uh, and also also these these still water hot tubs to, to some extent and that's a smaller part but still expanding the the portfolio so so that, that's that's pretty much the, the product portfolio in a, in a nutshell yeah very basic yeah. and uh, if i use the term we have a 45 pages long research written by you uh, last week uh, published, and um, but if I would say that in one line, and say quality to almost on a sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but not without risk. How, no, no. How would you no. how would you comment on that? Yeah, yeah. Well, the share has come was quite, I would say, overheated during the COVID times, as the as they were doing a really strong result, and now we are. Obviously, going in the in the other direction in terms of consumer demand, and that will that will hit hit Harvia, but the share is already down like seventy five percent from the <laughs> from the peak. So I think that's that's already enough. But but definitely the the near term will be tough, and and, and the, the the earnings will trend lower. And the real question is just that how how low how low will it go? And, and how low yeah. will it go? Yeah. But if you if you talk in terms of uh, quality. Uh, that was more like the company itself and the recent performance and what they're able to do. And the risks are within the macroeconomic kind of environment. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 how I would I would see it that the company itself is 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 quite quite good quality and they have been able to, to grow and also increase their market share over the over the years and and, and do also quite good um, M and A deals at least predominantly out of their their deals that, that, that yeah the company's company has quite a quite a solid track record but it's just that the, that the covid times really really kind of shot the demand through the roof and now it's normalizing and then you have on top of that the the, the weakening consumer purchasing power and all the all the economic weakness that kind of pushes that even even lower than, than maybe maybe lower than a normalization let's say yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you look at the quality bits of the company they have a uh, good cash flow and uh, strong balances and they have been also really good at showing really uh, impressive margin levels mm -hmm. i would say mm -hmm. but that is something that also is coming down could you elaborate a bit on these terms yeah yeah sure that so the so the company model is actually actually such that that that, that they, it's not very even though they have basically all the production in house it's not very capital intensive so that 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 gives gives quite good uh, returns on capital for example and uh, then i would say that they they do have quite clear competitive advantages yeah. mostly mostly stemming from the, the the fact that they they have been the, the, the because finland is is Kind of the, one of the main sauna markets in the world. They have been uh, one of the, the the first companies in this market like 70 years ago, and a lot of the competitive advantage stem from that. That they have been able to to first of all build a brand for 70 years, and well, yeah. they have other brands as well than Harvia, but still, that's that's the most important. They have good brands in the in the uh, commercial side as well. Then then secondly, they they have quite large. Production, so they are getting some economies of scale compared to to most, if if not all, yeah. other competitors, and uh, and then they do have quite strong vertical integration as a third third kind of competitive advantage. That they, like I mentioned, they actually do most of the production and 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 basically all of the components as well in their own production facilities, and 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 the competitors or many of them buy some parts 
like more and more, more as a ready component and, and, and are more compiling it. So that also gives them, first of all, they, they have better control over the whole, oh, the whole, whole production chain. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The chain and the supply chain and a better cost control perhaps as well. But, but, but uh, that also gives them a bigger piece of the margin, obviously. And that, that, uh, that, that's one, one of the reasons why, why the margin level is pretty, pretty, has been pretty solid around the 20% EBIT margin that they have had well, last year. Way above that, but that was <laughs> that was a uh, that was a, a, a typical year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but then let's take a look at the market. Yeah. Uh, fin in Finland and the Nordic countries, uh, sauna is something that is uh, uh, we are very used to it, and it's part of our way, everyday life. But uh, Harva is actually much more international than one might mm. think. Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate that a bit and uh, which countries are, are important for Harvia? Yeah, yeah, sure. So that was actually the, the, the kind of key idea and task back, back in 2014 when, when private equity company Capman bought, bought it and, 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 and brought most of the, the current management in, in, in the next few years into, into Harvia. So the main, main kind of task for them was to really drive the international growth and they have done it quite quite well actually both both through organically and, and through through acquisitions which have been value creative as well so so nowadays only 20 percent of the sales is in finland and then they have a big big chunk in in, in germany and other central europe and, and also in the usa so actually finland germany usa are all like 15 20 percent of the sales mm, mm. so so quite quite uh widespread in, in that sense and, and and now also just this year the the segment other countries which is all, all kinds of Latin Americas and Asia's have been growing really rapidly from a low base but but anyway mm. uh, but, but what would you what do we know about the market uh, there is room to grow but but are people that interested in the culture of sauna and uh, mm. Uh, will there be this kind of demand that we that Harvia expect it to mm, be? Mm. And uh, as stated in the report, many of the information stems from Harvia itself. And yeah. the, uh, do we really have a grasp of what the market potential is for real? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah. There is no public data on the on the market as such. They they have company figures, or, or actually they are like estimates from the company and a, a few years old study from a consultancy firm that, that the company uh, had had asked but uh, but yeah we, we do have a ballpark basically that the whole sauna and spa market is a bit below four billion or was last year and, okay. and basically yes. half of that is service or kind of the the installation and service part where Harvey is not in so the equipment this is like two billion so so it's not it's not a huge market globally but but of course the Harvey is is the biggest biggest in that market which which gives certain certain advantages mm. as well and it's 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 sometimes good that the market is not too big to attract <laughs> so much attention either and and it has been growing quite quite well globally at least through the last 10 years even before or covid it was a steady five percent growth so that that's what the company is kind of expecting and, and hoping for the for the future as well but but obviously there is also always risks on the on the <laughs> future expectations yeah um, but room to grow and uh, the in the long run the five percent Per, per year yeah yeah, the, yeah we'll yeah we'll still still believe in that and, and like, like mentioned in the, the international growth has been quite successful and it, it looks like that the, the of course international markets won't be like Finland that we have five million people and two and a half million saunas but but uh, still the, the the kind of penetration and, and uh, interest towards sauna is, is gradually growing growing also also in in many many other markets and as, as Harvia is the leading leading player in that, that market and especially in the heater side they, they definitely should get their, yeah. their fair yeah. share out of out of that that growth. And and then also it's important to to realize that in, in these more larger kind of more established markets the, the demand is is uh, quite a lot driven by replacement. So so in the heater side around seventy five percent of the 
of the market is from replacement demand. So when you, your, your current heater broke, or you just do a, a renovation on your house and then you decide to change, change, change the sound and change the heater, that, that brings a lot of the demand. But uh, of course, the, if you want to grow, you need also some new, new yeah. demand. But that uh, replacement side, it, it's pretty steady and it's non-cyclical and it's yeah. kind of... It, it should be, or that this is the problem with with the, with the COVID times in many companies that the kind of uh, old rules of thumb doesn't necessarily work because <laughs> because they had, they had so huge demand over the past few years that at least I think that the, the part part of that is is kind of a, a advanced demand or accelerated demand also in the replacement side. The company company is more saying that that's rather kind of new sales and, and the increasing penetration which 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 has impacted and, and increased during the COVID times. So I would I would definitely argue that there is at least partly the impact of also people really focusing on their homes as we um, I think yeah, everybody the, acknowledges that, that yeah, we're we'll doing, doing that yeah yeah for yeah. for few years and and, and and then then when we come and come out of COVID and, and now have uh, less money to spend that's that's also a quite obvious obvious thing where you where yeah. you might not want to put your money in the next next uh, few quarters at least yeah and that's that's a risk we're really going to take a scrutinized look mm. on um, I mean the track record the recent years have been has been amazing, mm. but we're really facing a different kind of reality at the moment. And uh, I mean, the energy crisis, uh, and uh, we talked a bit earlier about the hard winter we're going to mm. face, but I'm not that sure it's just going to be one winter. Mm. And mm. if you look at Germany, for instance, uh, they have, uh, how does the market look there? And uh, all over the globe, are people willing to build saunas and uh, will this change the real estate in, in a bigger picture? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that, that, is, that is definitely the question that, that uh, how, how long will this, uh, <laughs> let's say, weakening consumer purchasing power and all the high energy prices prevail and kind yeah. of our estimates are pretty much based on the idea that it would it would kind of start to balance out during the during the second half of, of next year not, mm. not that we are looking for any any growth still even in the latter part of next year but but, uh, but it's it would, would kind of stabilize if you're looking looking at harvias mm. harvias sales profile so yeah it, it might 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 well be that in, in europe we would have 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 tougher tougher times the, for longer like, yeah, there are see. different scenarios as you pointed out as well in the, yeah in yeah the in, in, indeed we have done a few few different scenarios also to the report and that that, that if the growth kind of Grow, grows or continues in in Europe or only continues in the in the markets outside Europe. Like we are actually looking looking pretty much now that in Germany we saw already a quite big drop for Harvey and Q2, and then now we believe that basically all of the European markets will decline in the coming quarters. But but North America and Asia will still increase, and of course there is a big difference in this business that in markets where where the Sauna, so the heaters are mostly in commercial use or, or like yeah. a luxury item that it's not so much impacted uh, as the whole household. Yeah, household. from the con consumer yeah. purchasing power. That's a really b good point mm. to to point out yeah. that uh, they are delivering to both consumers and more professional users yeah. like luxury spas and yeah, hotels exactly, and stuff. Exactly. So, so that brings some kind of stability to it. Yeah, yeah, some, some more, more to the consumer, consumer side, definitely. But, but still, there is a big element also of the commercial side. And for instance, Germany, which is a big sauna market, is more driven about to the consumer, uh, sorry, to the commercial demand. So, so yeah, that hopefully <laughs> balances it out, out somewhat. And then, then, so you know, always when you think from this, from from the. Finnish angle, it's it's not not the same outside Finland that everybody has a sauna and now now that people have less money that that it will automatically the demand will go down. So it's not it's not that straightforward necessarily in the yeah. in the more 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 kind of a, a emerging sauna markets, if if you will. Yeah, the drivers are different. Yeah. yeah, but you kind of pointed out that yeah we're facing hard times ahead and uh, the energy crisis and the uh, times we are living and less spend. Uh, possibilities to spend mm. and uh, and so forth. But you were also 
pointing out that up, I just have to read what mm. you said that 23 will be the weakest of the coming years, mm. but it will return onto a growth track mm. in 2024. Mm. Mm. Uh, what makes you say that? What, are you sure? Yeah, no, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't be never sure about the future. Yeah, but, 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 yeah. but what's the turning, what's your key for, for stating that? Because y yeah. how do you know that we're going to be out of this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Not yeah, well, fa yeah. facing a deeper depression. Uh, yeah, I guess it's, 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 it's uh, based on the idea that, uh, that uh, this, this inflation spike and energy crisis will will kind of there's one one more year to to get around that and and, and of course also the the inflation levels start to probably come down and, and then consumers uh, get get also some some wage raises so that's uh, the, the impact on the on the purchasing power is more more balanced when you look into into 24 so so at least there should should be a, a kind of continued decline but mm -hmm. but uh, of course it's very Uncertain still that, uh, especially for Harvia, that uh, how 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 low is the low point next year, and and, and then then at what what rate will they start to recover? But uh, as such, I'm pretty con convinced that the next year will be the weakest, and then we go 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 upwards again in the in the in the sales and earnings. But but uh, but uh, <laughs> but estimating the the figures is, is a much harder task. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> that we know. It's hard to see right into the future. Yeah. Uh, but what about the valuation? We mentioned earlier that it might be on sale. Could you? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we if, if we trust, like of, of course, trust trust my numbers to mm -hmm. the, that they are the best 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 uh, the, that that can be can can be considered. Uh, the, it looks looks very cheap. So next year with this lowest point of earnings during the many many years before or after it's it's a PE of 11 and EV a bit below 9 so so that actually gives you already some buffer to also weaker earnings so if, if it's you know if it's PE 13 and EV a bit 10 for the for the weakest year in, in 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 many years I would still still argue that it's it's pretty decent so so I, I think at least the 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 Risks regarding the valuation is and, and kind of more more towards the, the upside or, or vice versa. It gives some cushion that the estimates could actually be lower or the actual earnings that that what we are expecting at the moment. Thank you, Rauli, for all these comments. And if you want to dig into the company deeper, we have a link below with the latest research. Thank you. Thank you.